Hello, friends. Spicer here, and thank you for joining me for yet another episode of my favorite podcast. So uh, right off the bat, thank you. You folks listen, you share, you put reviews up. And I, it's really important to me that I express my gratitude to do that right off the bat. Um, I'd like to do it at the end of the, end of the episode as well, but... I, just, I am extremely grateful for every single one of you. You're watching on YouTube now as well, and just, like, thank you, truly. So uh, in today's episode, we're going to talk about what I consider to be the single most important thing to focus on if your goal is to start a successful, that's the, the caveat there, I guess, a successful online business. Um, but, but before we jump into that, Quick reminder that tomorrow, February 17th, the fr- it's a Friday, it's the final day to register for round 13 of my Instagram intensive, right? The Instagram, inten- the Instagram intensive is a six-week online group coaching program that teaches health and fitness pros exactly, I'm going to say exactly how to use Instagram for online business. Been talking about it all week. It's been in socials all week. If you haven't seen it, I'm sorry, we're talking about it now. If you got any questions, comments, concerns, first... Go to the show notes. You can check out the link that's going to take you to the info page slash registration page. Literally, all the stuff is on there. Uh, the FAQ section is very extensive. So check that out. If you still got more questions, shoot me a DM at the Movement Maestro. Shoot me a text, 310-737-2345. I will get back to you. Uh, if you're thinking you want to level up your Instagram game, I would love to have you. And I will not bullshit you. If I think you're not a good fit or is there something else that's better for you, I will also let you know. That. All right, so let's hop on into today's episode and chat about what I consider to be the key, the most important thing when it comes to starting a successful online business. When we look at this uh, online business, it's very easy for people to get caught up and focus on what I call fixed outcome items. I first introduced this concept of fixed versus open outcome items in episode 442. Thank you for linking that, Courtney. Uh, but what I mean by this is when people are first starting this bit, their businesses, they get focused on or caught up on um, or really enamored by with website and the name and the L- should they get an LLC and what colors and the fonts and things like that. Those things are important. An LLC is less important, though, I, I will say that. We'll do, maybe we'll do another episode about kind of the logistical stuff. Um, while those things are very important, what will ultimately determine your success as an online business owner and an in-person brick-and-mortar business owner is your ability to get results. That is hands down the most important thing to be focusing on if your goal is to run a successful online business. If you just want an online business, you can't even make any money. You're just like, I just want to have something, then fuck results, do whatever you want. But if you're actually trying to run a successful business, turn a profit, you got to be able to solve problems. You got to be able to get results for people. Danny Matei says it all the time. I borrowed it from him and I will borrow this phrase for the rest of time. Businesses are built on solutions to problems. Okay. If you can't solve problems, you don't have a business. Yes. Tangentially, the experience that you create absolutely matters. But in my opinion, a large part of like creating this experience falls under marketing, right? It's a storytelling. James Clear, I say this quote oftentimes, and I'm going to say it loosely, clever marketing can sell once, but only a good product can sell twice. AKA, you can be smooth talker, do all the bells and whistles, but if the person doesn't leave with the thing that they want, they won't come back. All right. So I'm thinking about my haircut, actually. If you were watching the video, you can see I got the old high and tight going on. Got the high and tight going on. Uh, and I go to a place called Falcon Barbers. They do both exceptionally well, right? They give me the outcome, aka I get a good haircut, and they have a really cool experience. Like they have like a bar there if you want, but it's not like over the top because you're like, I can only really drink. You know, if you're going to go over there and like, you can't really drink while you're getting a haircut, the hair falls in the, the drink, but it's there it's, it's, it's just in case you're waiting, but they don't have you waiting for a long time. The barbers run on time. You can schedule your appointments online. You can pay with a credit card. So the experience and like the actual like, the place looks and the music that's on, the experience is great. But more importantly than that, the outcome is great. And I will tell you, and if you have short hair, you know, it is hard to find a good barber. If you have long hair, maybe you feel the same way about finding a, a hairstylist, but when you have short hair, you need to get your hair cut more often. And so you're like constantly reminded. I, I could go every two weeks. I know my guy, Sean Pastuch, Dr. Sean Pastuch, goes every week. If you have a bad person, the person that can't cut your hair, like that is just a reminder every single time. So it is hard to find not only someone that's good at that craft and can cut your hair well, knows what they're doing, knows how to use, you know, clippers and knows how to actually use a straight edge or straight razor. But 
to have the second part as well, they actually run the business well. And I will say, and I think I speak for most people, that I will be more lax and more lenient on how well the business is run. Like, can I make appointments online? Do I have to wait? I'm more forgiving with that if I know I'm going to get a great haircut because it's hard to find people that are actually good at delivering that end result. But yes, ultimately, the person who's able to do both, in this case, Falcon Barbers, they're going to win. And you'll see that, I know I said before that you know we're more forgiving if the experience isn't as good, but you will continue to be reminded if the experience isn't that good. And eventually you may go and look for someone that can give you both the outcome and the experience. But what we're gonna start off with and what we're gonna focus on is delivering that outcome, getting results for your people. I truly believe that if you are obsessed with your craft, right, you get so into it, and you become the absolute best that you can be at your craft, you will always have clients, always. If you're watching the video and you saw my eyes dart up, to the, dart up to the sky there, the blimp is out. If I could turn the camera around and show you, I would. So little side note, little random tangent here. Uh, the Goodyear blimp, it is still in existence and is actually the official bird of Redondo Beach. It's the official bird. So I can see it from my window and it just makes me happy because I know that it means it's nice outside, it's warmer outside and it just went by the window. So, okay, back to the episode. So we're talking about the importance of getting results and the fact that a successful built, wow, a successful business is built on whether or not you can get results for your people. What I want you to understand with this is that however long it takes to get those results will influence, will, will directly influence, I should say, will directly influence how quickly you get new clients. So this is a saying like, yes, I can get results, I'm good. If we take that part out of the equation, how quickly you'll get new people based solely on your results is dependent upon how long it takes to get those results because certain things take longer. Like a haircut takes 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and then I can walk out and have a haircut. Whereas we go to, to uh, physical therapy, that doesn't take 45 minutes. One session does, but like actually getting better, feeling better, moving better, that takes longer. So we need that transformation to occur so that the person can go and talk about it, or even better, what Kathy Sierra calls word of obvious, people can see that this person has undergone a transformation and they're like, I want that too. Where did you go? What have you been doing? So we understand if it's just a haircut, something quick, cool, then you may get new clients quicker than something like physical therapy where that transformation takes longer. So if you are just starting out, your focus simply solely should be on getting results. That's it. I actually just did a post about this on Instagram not too long ago, and I said, stop trying to scale before you serve. Results both precede and beget reach. It's wordy a little bit. I understand that. But the whole concept there is that people, especially when it comes to Instagram, they think like, oh, I should have a million people. And I'm like, you don't deserve a million people because you can't help one person. Focus on the people that are in front of you, the people who show up, your early adopters, live on, live on them, love on them, get the best results that you can for them. And you will see that they will spread your message farther and faster than you ever could. So what should you do then if you're just starting out online? How do you actually get these results? I have always said, I truly believe that the best, easiest, fastest way to start an online business is in person. I actually just spoke about this. Uh, I was on uh, Dr. Sean's podcast. Again, I love that guy. Just, I love him. He's going to come back, come back on this podcast as well. But I was on this podcast, the Active Life podcast. Go check that episode out. I talked all about what it really takes to build a successful, profitable online personal brand. But I, I do believe that the cheat code there is to start in person. When I started my Instagram, I had already been treating for four or five years. I was confident as fuck that I could get results because I wasn't a new grad. Like, I had treated lots and lots of people by then and had gotten lots and lots of results and lots and lots of feedback. And I was like, yes, I can do that. If you don't have that luxury, right? You haven't started in person and you're like, I'm starting brand new and this is not a, you know, something I've done in person and I have no desire to be in person because well, I would say start in person and you have no desire, I just want to go online. Here's what I would suggest doing. Number one, decide on the problem that you wish to solve. We talked about that last episode as it relates to Instagram bio and, and niching or niching down. So decide on the problem that you wish to solve. AKA your niche, you need expertise in this. You need some. If you have no expertise and you're learning as you go and you're only one step ahead of your ideal client, you're not going to get clients that fast because you can't get them that results, right? You got to be way ahead of your people. So step number one, decide on the problem you want to solve. Step number two, teach everything you know 
one piece of content at a time and get strangers, get people in, on, on social media wins for free. They will pay you in attention. They will be paying you in attention at that point. Uh, I didn't specify a platform because you need to figure out what works best for you. Maybe it's a podcast. Maybe it's Instagram. Maybe it's TikTok. Maybe it's YouTube. Maybe it's Twitter. Maybe it's LinkedIn. Maybe it's Pinterest. Whatever else is out there. You get to decide, but you have to put yourself out there and get in front of people some way, shape, or form and show them that you have expertise in this thing and show them that you have solutions to their problems. From there, we wait to create, right? Number three is we see what's getting traction and then we productize something typically for free. Traction meaning it's getting likes, comments, shares, you're getting DMs about it. Or this is like kind of a lesser degree, you're talking about it a lot and you're like, yeah, this is the thing. That's, that can actually really, really more so than anything help you out with point number one of niching down. You're like, man, I talk about this thing a lot. This is should probably actually be my niche. The productize side of this is you create either your one-on-one -on -one offer that just kind of lives in the background so that if and when someone's ready to work with you, you have something loosely outlined there. Or you create a leveraged offer, and leverage means one to many, so it's you speaking to an audience. Typically, like a webinar is a great start, Instagram Live, something like that, where you can help a lot of people at once with this thing. From there, step number four, do the goddamn most to get results for those early adopters. So you're putting content up for free. Some start, things are starting to get a little traction. People are asking you questions. Cool, answer them. Give stuff away for free. Give your time away for free. Don't ask for money yet because they're not going to pay you. You don't have expertise yet. Let's get people these ones. Let's get some confidence there. And then we can look to, to charge. But first, we're going to look to get the traction and the interest there. And then we get those results. We get those results for those early adopters. Remember, I did this meme, talk about it from uh, Sex in the City. And when um, Miranda is talking to, is it Miranda? Yeah, Miranda is, no, it's not Miranda. It's Samantha is talking to Smith Jared and about his career. And she's like, first come the gays, then the girls, then the industry. For us in the online business space, it's first come your friends, then your family, then your strangers. So your earliest adopters will probably typically be people already in your ecosystem. That's why oftentimes people do well when they first start out if they're on Facebook because their friends and family are already there right? and they'll sign up for their services or you know they'll take a chance on them. If they take a chance on you, love on these people, get them a result, bend over backwards, do the most, figure out how to get them the result, which maybe is referring them out. If you're like, this isn't my expertise, that's fine. But if it's what you do, get them a result. They will spread your message farther and faster than you ever could, right? Because they've already broken through the trust barrier with their people. You haven't. So you get to shortcut it then, piggyback on, on the trust that they have and let them go and talk about you and how great you are. And then point number five, you got to give it as long as it takes, right? Things that will slow you down in building this trust and getting these reps and getting these early adopters is just largely switching your niche, being inconsistent. I show up, I don't show up, I stop, I've gone away for like five months. Focusing on width over depth, right? I, I said that with that post where people are just looking to scale before they serve. They're looking like, oh, what about that person? What about that person? Meanwhile, they have someone right here who's willing to invest and they're willing to invest their time and their attention. That is very valuable, Focus on the people who stayed. Focus on the people who are right in front of you. And another part that will slow things down is just not being that good at what you do. In the beginning, you're not. And it's okay. This is not about imposter syndrome. It's about, you know, being humble and like, yeah, I'm not that good yet. As you get better and you get more reps, things will tend to go faster, right? It it's, it's typically goes like slowly, slowly, suddenly. And it takes as long as it takes. Remember, circling back to what we said a little bit earlier, uh, however long it takes to get a result for your people or a transformation that will directly influence how quickly or slowly you acquire new clients, right? People have to undergo that transformation in order for other people to see that they've underwent a transformation or for another, in order for them to go and talk about said transformation. All right. I'm looking at my notes and that's it. It's, that's literally it. The number one thing to be focusing on, the key thing to be focusing on if your goal is to start a successful online business, is getting results for your people. Businesses are built on solutions to problems. And if you don't have solutions, my friends, you don't have a business. All right, you got to be able to solve problems. You got to be able to get results for people. My, my guy, Natty, we've had him on the, the podcast twice, I think. If you want to link those, that'd be awesome, Court. Um, and I put that post up the other day about not stop trying to scale before you served. And he was just like, yes, you can't scale shitty solutions. And I was like, that's it. 
you cannot scale shitty solutions. So you're like, oh, I don't just want to get results and do that well. No one's going to buy it. They'll buy it once. And they're not going to buy it twice. They're not going to tell anybody else about it. Take the time to really create a phenomenal product. And for many of you listening, the product is going to be your service. Get really good at that. And yes, you get good at that by, having, by getting results for one person at a time and giving it as long as it takes. You work those initial early adopters. You know, this is a process, realistically, folks, that can take years. And usually does take years. Not can. This is a process that, this is a process that takes years years. I'm going to draw a line in the sand there. This is a process that takes years, not weeks, not days, not months. It takes years. Give it the time that it, that it takes. Give it the time that it needs. Give it the time that it deserves. If you're listening to this, you're watching this, thank you, and you're thinking about starting an online business, my number one piece of advice, concern yourself with the ability to get results for people. One person at a time. That's it, folks. One quick reminder, actually. One more thing. One quick reminder. Don't forget. I'm plugging this thing because I fucking believe in it. I love it. And if you want to level up your Instagram game, I want to help you out. Tomorrow is the final day. Tomorrow is uh, February 17th, Friday. It's the final day to register for round 13 of my Instagram intensive. Six weeks group online coaching program for health and fitness pros. And I teach you exactly how to use Instagram for online business. If you got questions, comments, concerns, check out the link in the show notes. Uh, you can go directly to the page, the show note page, if you want on the computer. It's going to be themovementmaestro.com forward slash 450, just the number 450. Uh, if you got more questions, you can DM me at the Movement Maestro. You can shoot me a text, seven, nope, I almost gave the wrong number, 310-737-2345. I would love to have you. If the Instagram intensive ain't for you, that's, that's cool too. I am grateful that you listen. I'm grateful that you tune in, you share, you talk about this thing, you DM me. Uh, I got a DM the other day that, yes, the show notes do show up on Spotify. Thank you for listening and responding to my questions. I don't know. I don't use Spotify. I just kind of hope so. Thank you for everything. Thank you for being in my corner. And yeah, I will catch you next week. Until next time, friends. Maestro out.